How's it going, everyone? This is Winbo. I'm super excited about today's Blender lighting tutorials. This is a continue lighting series, and today we are going to talk about light position or positioning the light or direction of the light. As you can see, we already had a videos about the quality of the light, and today I'm just going to show you how to place these light in the in the professional way. Because uh, I'm, as you know, I'm a Photographer, so I do have a pretty strong uh, understanding of lighting. So today, this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, and let me just hiding all these looks. So in photography world, we have a lot of specific uh, terms regarding uh, lighting positions, and uh, people just kind of go nuts on it and uh, can be a little bit nerdy about it. Uh, I'm not a strong fan of how you have to talk. About photographers about these terms but I really want to utilizing this tutorials to to show you guys uh, why and where to positioning the light and what's the purpose of, of uh, the, these terms and the the, uh, the meaning of using these light positions so start with this as you can see here here's the render uh, pictures of just a regular portrait you can you can utilize this lighting to to illuminating your your monsters or uh, characters whatever you want to do but this character is is built was made through a add-on it's called a human uh, human gen uh, generator add-on so you can actually download that I will put the links to, in the description anyway so this lighting pattern or the position uh, we are called this is called short uh, broad lighting and the, uh, in the opposite, we have a short lighting. So what is the differences between the bo a broad, a board, and um, a short? As you can see here, it's quite different. And we are only using one single light source to creating this look. But why they are there, the name differences. The broad means the actual lumin, you know, when you're illuminating a items or subject, you have a bright face side, and you have a dark side. Whenever the bright, side is facing close to the camera which is on this side is actually close to the camera now uh, means we're using the broad light lighting uh, when the when the when the, the the bright side is actually further away from the camera angle uh, this is called the short lighting so as you can see here it's pretty also for me for memorize it, this type of thing is it's just when when you utilize this kind of lighting this type of lighting, generally speaking, is actually going to make the face looks a little bit wider because of the, the illuminating face side is a little bit uh, too, too much compared to this side. If I, if I turn this thing off and turn the short lighting on, it actually, you see, the face just look a little bit slimmer. While in the portraiture photography, a lot of photographers utilizing this type of uh, lighting tricks to actually kind of uh, slim some weight off the subjects and this is uh, how you utilize this to to actually control the look but you don't really need to really again talking people with these terms but you just need to be aware that these are the terms that you can use to uh, distinguish uh, the short lighting or the, the broad lighting and uh, it's just based on which side is closer to the uh, camera Okay, so this is one. So I'm going to close down this part. And the next part I'm going to talk about is the, it's called lighting patterns. It's, it's actually have a, quite a bit of uh, stuff going on here for, for this type of look. So I'm going to select this camera, uh, control zero to actually, uh, let's see what's going on here. And let's put on this on render view. Yep. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, on these, because I'm, I'm building a quite a complicated scene over here, it just take a little bit of while to actually loading everything in here. So as you can see here, this is the subject, right? And the first light I want to talk about is called the paramount, paramount light or butterfly light. So basically, you can see here, here's a, a small light. I, the reason I put this is a, a kind of smaller light. Uh, I don't want to put a big giant uh, light to actually, you won't be able to see the uh, the shadows, everything. That's actually losing the purpose that of uh, how we seeing these. Because we using these shadows to distinguish and to figure out what's going on for this lighting pattern. So this one's called the paramount light or butterfly light. Well, I never be a fan of understanding the 
butterfly light. It's, it actually is referring the shadow under the, the nose is having, having a butterfly shape. But I never figured out how this thing looks like. But basically, this light is uh, positioning directly straight in the front of the subject. And, and a lot of times, people utilize these type of uh, lighting at the, this top part and using a beauty dish, whatever. But as you can see here, this light actually illuminating the face very symmetrically see, see, and very evenly lit. And you can see the shadow of the chains actually kind of down here the, is, is in the neck. So actually, it's pretty cool lighting, uh, very often used in the in the fashion photographies and people are trying to accentuate the, the face, facial features of this light. And also because it's putting relatively in the front and actually if I'm turning uh, the, the, the angle of this, the actually is going to make the skin looks better because front lighting is actually make the skin better but right now the the purpose uh, right now is not that smooth it's because the lighting source is very small and uh, the whole point is just trying to demonstrating what is the butterfly lighting is about so this is called the butterfly lighting okay and the whole point of, of this uh, tutorial is just trying to have you get some basic understanding how these lights work so after that we are going to move this lighting to the side a little bit so the next one is called the loop lighting so basically you can see here it's no longer straight face on it's actually moved to the side a little bit and the, why we're calling this thing the loop light because it's generally because as we are actually creating a shadow uh, based on the nose there's a loops going on here so you have this type of look and here and uh, that's why we're calling loop light a lot of time this light is this kind of lighting position is very popular and uh, usually you will have another fill light to actually fill in these shadows and it doesn't make it look so dark but I just wanted to show you what is one light looks like when you actually illuminating a, a characters okay so next one we are going to move to the light to the another further part is called Rembrandt light I don't know if you've ever heard about this. Rembrandt actually is a, a Dutch a painter, and the one his signature or his his painting style is actually have this triangle highlight underneath the other side of the uh, eyes. So that is what the Rembrandt lighting is about. So basically, you are actually just kind of continue moving the light over here until the loop is getting a bit longer and longer and attached to the other side of shadow. So as you can hear, if, if I'm turning on the loop on, light on, is in here when when you actually grabbing this um, away. So you see, it's actually forming the Rembrandt that just the the, the shadow square, uh, uh, triangle square, going on the highlight over there. Okay, so that's what is the the loop light and the rem the differences between the loop light and the Rembrandt light. It's kind of cool, especially when you actually having a bigger light source. If I can scale it up, you wouldn't be actually think about oh this is a Rembrandt light. It is, and this looks very cool and uh, it just looks very nice. And I th I feels like having a little bit of highlight or uh, illuminating in this under the chin, it just make this character look so much cooler. Don't you think? Well, a lot of people believe that, and I, I'm one of them as well. So just take your time to really figure out what you're trying to do, and when you're positioning a light, it actually has there's a certain way to do that, and the people doing that on purpose. Uh, it's not just some random like three point lighting system that you can just put it on, and then your render or your your model is gonna looks great. It doesn't really work like that. So you really need to know understanding light better. So another one is pretty straightforward. It's called split light so this is kind of cool uh, I, I will, I'm hoping you notice that this model didn't change anything with the model no differences on the facial expression but it's changing the light it just actually brings some sort of characters in there right and think about this this split lighting is actually just kind of split the bright side and dark side evenly on, the, on uh, because it's lighting positions and it suddenly you make it feels like this person looks very cool and you can you just give you some uh, uh, rooms for the imagination on that side 
or even if you have some monsters that have a pretty cool uh, different textures one side is real human face the other one is mechanical uh, machinery type of stuff and then you highlight it using some fills it's gonna look pretty damn cool uh, so but this is just kind of the, the one of the name that people very use uh, use very oftenly it's called a spit light um, Another thing I really want to point it out is uh, I, I call this special lighting. It was because the reason is, is that is usually sometimes people don't utilizing this type of light in in real life in studios for for general portraiture shootings. Because think about this light. I put it at the very top. Actually, I'm trying to use this eye socket or to actually use an eyebrows to generating a shadow to really block this type of a. Uh, uh, lights going into the eyes it looks a little bit misery and very cool and the dramatic type of look uh, usually for for regular human portrait we try to avoid that but come on man you are in the CG world and you're trying to creating some characters that looks very cool and dramatic you can definitely try this type of lighting top light and this is very cool and again we didn't change anything on the model it just right quickly uh, introduce something really cool using the lighting so if I'm adding some adding some it has some uh, uh, this lighting adding some rim light look at this the dramatic chain right a little bit cyberpunk stuff you know it's just getting some rim light what I did to rim light and I'm actually using a, a little bit darker background with it right it's just it, you don't see any details the whole point of lighting it doesn't mean you need to show everything every single details you're trying to create a mood and trying to tell a story you see this is a beautiful uh, part of the being understanding how to light as a subject rather than really spending hours and hours trying to modeling and uh, doing some correct textures but you can do a lot of stuff with just using the light. So again, without using the top light, I can introduce another light. That, it, this is just silhouette. It's pretty cool, right? Just using the rim light. And I'm using the another one. This is called the bottom light. Uh, it's supposed to change the name anyway. But actually illuminating from the bottom to the top, or some people call it the ghost lighting. The simple reasons why we also don't use this type of lighting in the in the photography world because nobody really want to be photographed in this lighting in human natures we are very t often every day we are seeing light either coming from the top in the entire room the lighting from the top or the lighting from the sun it's always from top to the bottom you, you know very rarely to see the light is coming from the bottom to the top that's why a lot of horror movies and uh, posters are trying to produce in portraits to utilize this type of light. It's because it looks very uh, abnormal, it's very unique, very different. So that's why you think about it, we didn't change the expression. Right now, with this lighting, this ex expression, this smile, just can be looks a little bit creepy, don't you think? Yeah, that's the power of lighting. Um, so here's, here's that pretty much what I, I can show you. Uh, so I'll, everything about this lighting uh, series, I, I again, I really want you to, to let you guys to understanding the, the, all, these, all these differences of, of each light. They can actually changing the way how you think about uh, uh, um, uh, characters and how you telling a story just using lighting. You don't necessarily need to match these names with this type of look, but I really want you to be aware uh, lighting positions are another very important uh, factor that when you're using lighting, not just about lighting qualities and not just about uh, how big is the light source. It's a lot of time it's just about how you use the light, right? so cool right I, I'm always a big fan of lighting and that's why I'm, I'm a photographer so I'm hoping this tutorial is going to help you and uh, I'm really hoping you understand the studio lighting a little bit better in a different perspective um, okay again thank you so much for watching and uh, welcome you to hang out on my uh, Instagram or social media and uh, if you have any questions please leave your please leave your question uh, in the comments and I will see you in the next video bye